10 years old. I'm on the top of the diving board. My friends are urging me. Go on, Andy! Jump! Jump! I couldn't. I was frozen. I couldn't let go of the bars either side. I've never felt so low as the time when I was walking down the ladder after that event. My friends mocked me and jeered me. They had no sympathy. So you can imagine my reaction when, 10 or so years later, I'm in New Zealand with a girlfriend at the time. And she turns to me and says, darling, I want a bungee jump. Bungee jump? <laughs> you see, the thing is about bungee jumping, well, rather my girlfriend decided she wanted to bungee jump, is that it threw up a dilemma. If she bungee jumped, I would have to bungee jump. Otherwise, face a torment of mocking from my friends back home. So what was I to do? Madam Contest Chair, my fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. Tonight, I'm going to talk to you about taking on your fears head on. No matter how deep seated they may be, no matter how long you may have held those fears, we talk about taking it as an opportunity, taking that leap of faith. So back to my story. What did I do? Did I man up and say, yeah, come on, let's do this? Did I heck? I pleaded, I begged for them not to do it. I said, this is crazy. What are you thinking? And, and that's, do you know how gut-wrenchingly scary a bungee jump will be? I even went so far as to tell her that there's a slight risk she could get a detached retina. Apparently, <laughs> apparently it's true. But she was having none of it. She marched straight down to the office and signed up, but not for anyone. She signed up for the biggest one she could, the Nevis bungee jump, 134 meters high, 8.5 seconds of free fall. So then it was over to me, I had no choice. I took a big goal and I signed on the dotted line. The next day, I'll never forget it, I look out my window and I can see waiting for me, like a hearse, a big black 4x4. Four four. <laughs> it carried me to my fate, up this big rocky mountain road. And as we're going up there, I look to the left, and I can see a sheer cliff face. I thought, this is scary enough, never mind the, bu the bungee jump. After about 20 or so minutes, we cross the summit, and there I see it, suspended on high tension suspension cords. Above the, rip, the Nevis River Valley is a Nevis bungee pod swaying ominously in the wind. I jumped in the, comfort, the cable car with my girlfriend and we made our ascent to the, to, the, uh, to the bungee pod. As we got there, I was given an opportunity. They said, who wants to go first? <laughs> that was me and gentleman. I said, hey, I'm ladies first, ladies first. <laughs> And I'll never forget it. They put the bungee cord around her ankles. She walked off to the edge, and on cue, my girlfriend jumped. What a lady, what courage. I, on the other hand, was a little bit more freaked out. As she, as she came back up and ascended back to the pod, I asked her, how was it, how was it? She looked at me, teary-eyed. She looked disheveled, she looked distraught. She couldn't even speak. The jump assistant tapped me on the shoulder. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> I sat in the chair. The jump assistant wrapped his, wrapped his the cable around my ankles. They stuck a big camera in my face. And I had to feign excitement, but my stomach was doing somersaults. As I got up, once, once ready, I got up and I waddled over to the edge. Now I had to be very careful, because it's actually quite hard to walk with bungee wire wrapped right around your ankles. And I didn't want to fall off. That's the last thing I wanted to do. So I got to the edge, and I look over. Wrong idea. Beneath me, what is actually quite a large river, the Nevis River, was like a tiny little stream. And all I could see was big, black, jagged rocks waiting for me below. Don't look down again. 
I looked forward and I picked a spot out on the mountain and I just kept my focus on that. Then the jump assistant started throwing the bungee cord off the edge. And the thing about bungee cord, it's quite heavy. And it began to weigh me over. I thought, this isn't right. So I'm putting myself back up. I'm trying to hold myself steady. I'm trying to balance. And I'm breathing. I'm breathing. Okay, just try and keep it together. And all I can hear, it goes quiet. I can just hear my heart beating faster and faster and faster. And my mouth is dry. Dry it is right now. It's really dry. <laughs> <laughs> and I hear the jump assistant start his countdown. Five! Oh my god, this is crazy. What am I doing? Four! Oh my god, I have to do it. My friends would want me forever. Three, and worse still, I'll always regret it. Two, right, this is it. This is me facing my biggest fear. One, and I just hear my heart beat faster and faster. Jump! And I did! I jumped! And then my first thought was, The last thing I've got left in my locker, ladies and gentlemen. I flap my arms on the <laughs> Needless to say, I, it didn't work. And I thought, well, that's it. I'm a goner. It's over. And just like I thought that, the bungee cord snapped me back upwards. And I was alive. The greatest feeling I've ever felt. So, ladies and gentlemen. What can I tell you about that story? What can, what can I do to urge you, to inspire you from that story? Well, I think life is a funny way of throwing up these situations where you're forced to do something you don't want to do, but actually you need to treat them like they're an opportunity. I urge you, when you get these situations, to take them head on. I urge you to treat them as, as, a, as a unique opportunity and to take that leap of faith. Ladies and gentlemen, I urge you to jump. Thank you for listening. One minute.